Junto. Uh, this is a solo mission. So for, for this solo mission, um, I wanted to kind of do a couple segments. Um, I'm an avid hiker. Uh, I get I get usually the other parts the other members of Ju the Long Live Junto squad to, to come with me on my uh, treks. But one of the big things about you know going hiking is really that on the way there and on the way home part. You know, we're all most of us we all don't live in a you know on a mountain, so we're able we have to kind of <laughs> it's a, it's quite quite a journey to get there. And uh, with that journey, I want to want to kind of always always rehash kind of the, the experience that I've had um, on that drive home. For me, the way I look at when I say drive home from a, as a segment basis is that it's really going to be this, this feeling of um, oftentimes we're, we're experiencing, we're experiencing this feeling of, you know, when we, we finish a good workout or we finish going hiking, we're like, man, we want to just zoom back home. And that's how I am. I'm always focused on the next thing in life. And, and, you know, the honeydews at home, I got to do the chores, the, the, you know, the upcoming work week and the stresses that come with that. And in a way, the drive home is very therapeutic. It's, you feel accomplished, um, whether, you know, you just finished a long day of work or you finished uh, doing a nice, you know, five mile hike. You just ultimately have this feeling of, hey, I finished, I, I've accomplished something. Um, accomplishing is something that we, that goes so, in, it, it, it's only valued by other people really at times, but how much you really accomplish in your life can be how you see it. And uh, that's kind of how I see things is when I, when I do hiking, uh, it's a little bit of nostalgia and it's, it's a lot of accomplishing. It's that feeling of I'm able to, to go in some other nature and kind of take control of, of what I'm able to do um, while also leaning on mother nature to really listen and be almost like a therapy or a, a psychologist in a way to me where she's listening and listening to my thoughts and lets me let go of all the stresses and, and pain points that I've had from that work week or in you know, the past couple months. Um, you know, I'm always gonna, on these, I'll always kill, always uh, kill a, or beat a dead horse in a, say, in a sense where uh, hiking is, can be so, so, so therapeutic to your mind. Um, especially when you're constantly plugged into you know the online world it's one of those things where you don't have reception you disconnect completely and you get this feeling of man like when you're out there nothing really else matters you're you're focused on your breathing you're focused on hopefully <laughs> no animal will come in and get in you but you know it could the way you see it that lens the, the way that your lens is uh, looking at it you you can definitely get an experience that can like really go into your soul and uh, that's that's what really hiking is for me. Um, the drive home segment is really us going, you know, that drive home and me talking about how the journey felt and really how it does and, and how that how that hike helped me throughout what I'm going through, what, you know, what stage of life I'm in. Um, I don't ever want to come off like I'm, a, I'm an experienced uh, trekker. Um, there are people that, that are professionally do these things. Um, that said, I, I have a lot of, I, I have to say I at least have a thousand miles under my belt in terms of hiking in my life. Um, grew up with my, my father and, and uh, grandfather hiking and they were always really uh, uh, influences on me in a way where uh, as a child I hated it. I hated it completely. I thought like most people hiking is stupid and it's like why would you subject yourself to this miserable torture and I think like I remember the first day it started clicking for me and it the first day where it was when you know I, I go with my dad and my grandpa and they, they could go on 30 40 mile hikes forever and you would just sit there and you're like damn how they, they wouldn't stop they would just keep going and going like the energizer bunny and you're you're like what the heck like how like how are they enjoying this and then really really what it kind of came down to is how one day I remember taking a, a friend on a hike and I I I remember us going like three or four miles and I totally destroyed this friend and I feel bad for that but I did, did like three or four mile hike and I, I remember thinking I'm like damn this is nothing to me and and I realized through that that stamina that I had built up through my dad kind of torturing me <laughs> in his own way that you know hiking hiking has been that I've I've become like a uh, you know an Iron Man in terms of being able to kind of just endure uh, whatever is thrown at me. Um, 
and I've been in really harsh environments. I've been in situations where snow's kind of gotten to us and we're, we don't know where we are. And, um, and a lot of how I watched my dad, how he handled himself in those scary moments where I looked at him, you know, in life, you have to stand up and do it yourself. And the only way to really do that is to, to remain calm. And so hiking is, that's what hiking's to me. And, and uh, I think a lot of the times, like I said, when we're driving home, uh, we always focus on the next steps in, in, in our life. Instead, we should recount what that, every, every time you're driving home, like I said, it could be from hiking or from work or from a dinner with your other half or from whatever. That drive is very therapeutic. It's it, the road. The road's talking to you, and you're able to really just sit there and think about all the blessings you have. And, um, and so, when I'm hiking, you know that's that's what hiking is to me. Like especially uh, recounting today's hike. You know, I uh, I've had a uh, over the weekend. I hadn't been feeling too well um, from a from just a stress standpoint and life standpoint. I feel like um, I've been having to go back to therapy, and things have just not been going well. I feel down on my luck and the, the, the weird part is I look at other people's lives and what people are going through through the pandemic and their lost jobs and losing losing people losing you know loved ones and I sit there and I'm like man how am I not counting my blessings like how how have I let this you know negativity just just consume me completely and so um, you know I've got always you know I when I when I started the hike today it was like you know I felt really distraught um, really nervous. It's been the first time I've hiked by myself in a while. Uh, usually I do it with other people now, and so there's a fear there. Uh, I'm going to go into some of the, the cool stuff I, you know, I bring with me. Um, again, not a not a skilled skilled hike. I'm going to say I'm an expert hiker, so uh, take take my advice with a grain of salt. But uh, I think it's some of the stuff I have is good for, especially for amateur hikers. But uh, today's hikes, like uh, it was really just starting out. The terrain was extremely boulder climbing um, and I remember starting it and I'm like damn like I'm out of shape and that's the only thought I had and and I, I wanted to get negative I wanted to think man I've let myself go where you know I can't even do this anymore I, I like I, I could be able to do this but I, I looked at I thought about my mind and I said my mind knows it can do this and so I just kept going and you know a couple miles go by and get through the, that bad boulder terrain and um, and so I'm literally just climbing boulders at a certain point. And then I finally get to a thing called a side uh, sidewinder. Or is it sidewinder? Yeah. Or sidewinder is a snake. Um, uh, what's it? I'm trying to think what it's called. It's like a... Uh, it's where the trail goes um, like back and forth uh, from a vertical, vertical perspective. And uh, crazy, crazy vertical. Um, I think I went up at least 1,500... Uh, square, sorry, 1,500 feet in a span of half hour. So I was, I was getting my butt kicked, and um, and as I was getting my butt kicked, I, I was thinking, I'm like, man, again, I'm out of shape, and, and that negativity is there. But, but I, I trusted my breathing. I, you know, I thought about, you know, again, my dad and my my grandpa and what they they were able to do, even you know, at times when they were probably bigger guys, you know, they gained weight because it wasn't a focus for them. But, uh, but for me, like doing that sidewinder, uh, just destroyed me <laughs> like completely. Uh, I'm pretty sore from that, from that experience. So, um, I got, I would say at least, uh, I finished with almost six miles today. Um, it's a lot better. It's been the first time in three months that I've hiked and the way, if the way the hike went, it, um, it was very, very, uh, peaceful because I think I only ran into like four or five people, um, and running into people is one of the coolest parts about hiking. I feel like you'll run into you can run into people where you just walk they walk right past you and nothing no, nothing happens. But every once in a while you'll run into someone that's kind of interesting. And um, as I was finishing the hike, there was I think he was like you know upper teens uh, to early twenties. He comes up to me and he says, "Hey, did you see a rock with a lot of ladybugs on it?" And I thought he was I thought he was messing with me. Um, so I I told him I was like, "No, I didn't see that." And, and he told me, I guess, that there's this whole experience where at certain streams, um, and only at specific streams, that ladybugs converge. And he said they're called, he converged ladybugs. Um, I didn't look it up, and I still haven't looked it up. And I, you know, to me, it could be complete BS, but he seemed so passionate about it. And I think about my hikes, and my hike, the way I look at hikes is, it's like I'm, I'm pretty much purposely just step by step 
trying to recalibrate myself, recalibrate my brain, and really focus on something else for a while where I can recalibrate and have an appreciation for, you know, what uh, past generations have gone through. I mean, we, we, I take, we take our lives so for granted in terms of what we have um, from just a, from a physical and, you know, not needing to worry about uh, war or needing to worry about uh, like certain infections because of what science has brought us. And, and uh, when I'm out in mother nature, I just, I kind of, it's a combination of nostalgia with my, my, uh, you know, generations, uh, my, my grandpa and my uh, dad, but more or less, it's also me thinking about man, like what they went through. And, and as I, that kind of therapy in its own way is when I'm done and I'm on this, on these drive homes, it's like, man, how lucky am I that, you know, I have someone I can go home to. Um, I have a dog that I can go home to. I've got, you know, a great group of friends and, and family that they, they're they they're able to just really, they've been there so supportive of me, but I, I've been so in, I've been so in such in a negative mindset because of, you know, me seeing it. You know, my lens is, the way I see it right now is, is negative. And, and every hike after every hike, I feel like it just re-jump starts my brain in the most positive way. It helps me let go of like this pressure on like you know like when you feel like the weight of the world is on your shoulders and you're just stressing about life and and you look at it and you're like man, you're going through that grind and and all you can focus is on the grind and the negativity that comes with it and, and negativity is a choice like seeing it that way and for me it's easiest like it's easier for me to to focus on that negativity and and not really count my blessings and and especially for me like I think about what like I said a lot of people have gone through and and uh you know that those hikes do that for me um and it took time to get there it took time to see the hike that way uh but I think everybody's got their own hike like they've got you know I have friends that they do jujitsu. I have friends that they love to game and gaming is a way to bring them at peace and um and you know everybody's got their own you know cook, cooking for some people's that way like I I love to get lost in the cooking too and and uh, I think when you're allowed to let yourself go for a couple hours and and it, and you, the beauty of it is you go through the therapy. So going through the hike for me today was was, was beautiful. It, it re recalibrated me. But the drive home, the drive home is where I celebrate it. You celebrate it with a drive home. You, you say, you know, thank God I have a great wife. Thank God I've got great best friends that, that have always been supportive. I have probably arguably the best mom and dad I've ever, that a person could have. Um, and, and it's like, you just, you look at how many things in life I've got that, you know, a lot of people would want and they would, they would give a lot to get. And so, um, that, that drive, that's what the, this segment's about. It's about the drive home. Like how often we look at the drive home as a negative thing from work where you're sitting in traffic for an hour. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know what the, the math is behind it, but they say with sleeping, spend the money on the mattress, right? It's one third of your life. It's it's a huge part of your life. Like being comfortable when you sleep is a big part of it. But what about the parts where you can't sleep? The parts where you're driving home, you know, I, I, I don't even know how many hours I've been in traffic where, uh, you know, I've had road rage or I've been angry and how much time I wasted in life being angry at that and, and um, you know, I look at that as, as the drive home, if I see it, the drive home, and, and I hope if there's, you know, some of you listeners listening where you're you're sitting there on your drive home and you're hearing this, this helps you wake up. And maybe maybe it's a, you're listening on a, on the podcast or you're listening through YouTube. Um, even if I touch a couple of you in that way where you're able to look at, you know, after every event, after every event you do in your life, if on that drive home, that should be a recount of blessings. It should be, how did this positively impact me? How did this make me feel better? And sometimes it's negative stuff. Sometimes, you know, I, I recently um, was at a funeral for uh, a friend, or sorry, I was at a funeral of a friend a couple weeks ago. And I think about that drive and I was with my, my mom and, and um, sister and one of my best friends. And I thought like, you know, I, I was so clouded in judgment. Like I, w I was just thinking about what he had gone through in his last moments. And I was thinking about his mom and his dad. And and I, I look at it now when I, you know, I look at it now after I did the hike and I think I was with my, those people. Like he doesn't, he doesn't get to be with those people anymore. They don't get to be with him anymore. 
and they, they would do anything to feel that and and it's funny like I I didn't t I don't you just take it for granted on that drive like you just look at driving as a chore as a, as a as a, a path to the destination but look at driving especially when you got people in the car with you look at it as um, look at it as as a, as a blessing look at the people that you got in there try to try to think about them and and count what they do for it count the blessings they bring in your life the happiness the joy the things that you take for granted because i because god knows we take so much for granted and yeah and i hope i hope this segment uh ultimately does that for for most people and that's kind of the goal of it every time um really what what the how it's going to work is uh is one day if we have uh, starlink you know praying for elon to to get it in the the uh some of the mountains that we go to but um starlink for your phone i guess uh, ideally, it would be cool to, to, to be able to do the live streaming via via um, or live streaming when I'm when I'm hiking. But uh, we'll kind of get there at some point. Most like what I'm going to be doing is recording uh, our hikes through through um, GoPro and then posting on YouTube. Um, you get some beautiful shots on Instagram as well. I think the the best part about that is also validates that I'm actually hiking and not pulling your guys's leg, um, trying to act like I'm <laughs> just totally making all this up. But um, but yeah, you're you're able to look if you go on to our YouTube channel, uh, uh, Long Live Junto, and then our uh, Instagram, Long Dot or Long Period Dot. I'm sorry, Long Period Live Period Junto. Um, you'll be able to see some good stuff as as this progresses. Um, this is just segment one, or uh, this is just the first segment of this. So um, we'll get some stuff online. But um, one of the cool parts is after every hike, I think what I want to recount, and hopefully this this means something to you guys is really what are the products I brought um not necessarily from a from a uh from a um like brand loyalty standpoint but more or less like what are the some of the stuff that I bring on hikes that could make it a little bit easier for you guys for your first time if you never hiked or maybe you've never used it um use the use the products that I would that I've had but uh some of the coolest things that I've had I've had for at least 10 years of my life and they've been so beneficial to me um so i'm gonna i'm gonna as i'm driving i'm going to go into the gym right now after this hike but i'm gonna pull over and uh start sharing some of these items and and uh this isn't this is free marketing for some of these brands but um but yeah more or less the products themselves are are you know what benefits do they have for me um when i why i would use them on a five mile hike um and the, the beauty is, is when I'm starting to do 10 to 15 mile hikes or 20 mile hikes, I'll have a lot more different products that, you know, you would, you would discard when you're, you're doing a shorter hike. Um, and I think, I think those preps should be, could be beneficial. We'll see how, how it goes. Um, you'll obviously see a repeat of this in a, in a sense where you'll start seeing repeats of the, uh, the products that I'm showing, but, but again, it's that re repetitive nature. Um, you know, I use these products to, I use these products for hiking to, to help me from an overall um, ligament ligament um, and muscle standpoint. Um, some of the stuff, if I didn't have it, I would I would feel it every time after. Um, as I've gotten older, I've had some, uh, especially on my, my right knee, it's just been no bueno. And so I think, you know, when I have these products, I'm able to, to, to really let let the products help me through that, that pain. Um, and it's been beneficial. So um, I'm going to go ahead and flip it around here. And you're going to get some in and out because I got in and out on the way home here. But but one of the first and the most prized possessions I've ever gotten is this camel pack. I've had it for, say, man, at least, you know, 10 years of my life. This thing has gone through multiple continents. And it's been a – it's taken a, a, a beating in its time, ripped apart in certain areas, uh, but I think that's what makes it special about it. You know, that this camel pack for me, what, what it does is it's a, um, a three liter bladder. Um, I recommend for anyone, especially if they're newer hiking to have a camel pack, especially if they go on a hike, they're not familiar with it's, it's one of those things you just sit there and you're like, man, it's it, to me, it, it's, it's a no brainer instead of holding a water bottle and running out of water. Um, you can load up a lot of stuff in there. Um, keys, obviously your phone, and all that junk, but a lot of stuff that like emergency stuff like sunscreen, um, Advil, all the above in that that category you can kind of throw in there. If you have snacks because you're doing a long trek, it's actually a good you know I'll throw some good uh, good uh, Cliff bars in there and um, 
Yeah, I, I always recommend at least some type of water uh, bladder bag. Um, you could always get the bladder separately and throw it into a, a backpack. That also works. But man, this this thing's a, is a gem to me. Uh, the Gerber. Uh, one of the things about this knife is uh, it was given to me by a friend, and uh, I remember when he given to me, and um, I seldomly have to use it. In fact, I don't really bring it as much anymore if I'm on a hike with other people. But when I'm solo, it's just one of these like great knives that you know if worst comes to worst it's going to be there for me when i need it to be and and hopefully uh hopefully it does some damage to whatever is trying to get to me um and again this is this uh these uh i've gone into how my knees over time have, have kind of taken a beating uh, i always believe in poles um uh as i was older i didn't or as i was younger i should say i didn't have them um as i've gotten older they take so much pressure off of the knees for me and my ankles um, other benefit too is if you're not the the most uh, balanced person um, and you're not wearing the best of shoes this could be a lifesaver um, it's literally like you're on fours if you have two of them and it, for me for me they've been such a benefit um, they've protected me from slipping uh, when I do slip I'm able to catch my fall a lot better um, and yeah especially on, on like boulder climbing and things where it gets a little bit uh, weird where your ankle's kind of doing some weird stuff. This could help you kind of put pressure on your hands and your uh, shoulders while it gives you it gives you a little bit of relief feeling on that those ankles. So any person in the world that hikes, especially alone, should use an air horn. Um, any, I, I don't care who it is. Like I, th this is one of the things that I, I don't I don't care who it is or where you where you're at. You should always have one of these. The reason for it is because if you think most animals, the especially in our area, you will run into mountain lions and bobcats. And I think, I mean, we I don't know if we have too many bears anymore around here, but but up up north and uh, where we're at, definitely we'd run into bears. The louder you, the louder sound you come off to the animal, the more the bigger it thinks you are, or the tougher it thinks you are. So you think about bears and how loud they are. I mean, to me, I don't know if there's much science behind it, but. I had talked to a, um, I was out at Mount San Jacinto in Idaho Wild and I had talked to this older couple and she had said to me, she, old lady didn't have, you know, poles didn't have, uh, barely had the shoes, her hiking shoes weren't all that good. And she said, this is a lifesaver. It's, we've run into so many things in our, our time, um, as hikers and this thing, you just blow it and it scares the, the living crap out of the animal and they'll go the other way. And so had a couple times had to use an air horn um where i've seen either a mountain lion they didn't get close to me at all but it's definitely one of the things where i've had to blow it um especially in the cleveland national forest area like i said always have always have and this is the costco brand of course you know another uh, free marketing for uh, for kirkland here but um essentially the, these tylenol or again some advil or bear you definitely want to have that at, at all costs because it's like one of those things where if you get in a, a barely bad situation where you're in pain and you can pop those in there and it'll kind of take some take the edge off you just never know um this bad boy i've had since i'll put this over here i went to the grand canyon um it bought this from a native american um reason why i bring it to me on a separate individual hike or bring it with me on a separate individual hike is it based on the the native american and you don't know if uh this is just him trying to sell to me or there's any truth to it but this uh this particular weapon has you know killed over other it's been used in battle for um uh killing other native americans in in uh in tribe battles and he went over kind of uh what the symbols meant to me it's been so long that i've forgotten necessarily what they are but when i'm out there especially in certain parts of nature um, having this with me as backup i it, again it can be used as a weapon the uh, i rely more on my knife for that but i i kind of bring this with as almost like a as a feeling of you know native americans show so much appreciation for the land and and the more you understand how much like anytime i've run into to um i've gone to a place where it's an indian reservation and they the the way that they they kind of look at the land and, and certain beauties of it it's it's always an appreciation that that uh just kind of following those people um again if for backup if i need it it's a it's a good little weapon but uh it's more symbolic to me and kind of the journey that i'm on last but not last but not least and these things have gone through hell i bought these at uh hurricane utah right before i went to zion and they're called solomons 
Um, I wear them with wool socks and they are, these things are perfect. I either suggest Solmon's or uh, Oboe's, again, free marketing. But man, these, these shoes, you don't have to break them in. You're, you're paying a premium for them, but you don't have to break them in. It feels comfortable the whole time and they'll last you a long, long time. And with those wool socks, you can go through any terrain, um, especially any water or ice, ice feeling, and you're, you're gonna feel the same exact way. So I'm gonna pretty much wrap up right now, but I wanted to, you know, say thank you guys. It looks like uh, I had a couple people uh, jo join, and uh, and just want to say thank you. I mean, this is gonna be one of those segments that anytime um, I I hopefully get uh, some of the uh, other uh, members of Junto to come with, um, they'll definitely uh, contribute, and we can kind of it'll be the drive home and how we felt. Um, but yeah, the the drive home is a big big part of your life. Uh, treat it treat it as a, an ability to treat it with the ability where you can look back at what you just did and count the blessings in it. Um, it could be hiking, like I said, or it could be, could be work. It could be one of the worst days you ever had, but even those have, have value to your life. And, um, and the drive home can help you kind of, kind of reset yourself in a way of, you know, counting those blessings, counting what, what things you can learn from. And, uh, and hopefully through that journey home, you know, you feel a little bit better when you get home and, uh, and you're able to show that appreciation to, to your loved ones and to your friends. Um, you know, God knows we, we don't do it enough and as people, and, um, some of us aren't like me, I don't, I don't, I feel like I don't do it as well, uh, as I should. So, um, I hope if anyone, <laughs> anyone saw this, uh, it, it impacted you in a good way. Um, this is going to be a norm. And so pretty much after every hike, um, I'll be, go ahead and talk about my journey of that particular hike. Um, we'll be posting it on YouTube. Uh, one, we'll be posting those videos on YouTube's little clips of the, of the hike themselves. So you guys can kind of feel, get a feel of the terrain that had gone through. Um, that's going to be at long live Junto, um, on YouTube. And then, uh, again, the, the, the beautiful pictures that I'll take are going to be on our Instagram at law long dot live dot Junto. Um, so thank you guys for joining. Uh, hopefully you'll get a few more of these segments and, uh, and, um, and they're very meaningful to you. Thank you.